Welcome to the Dave Campbell's Texas Football Recruiting Roundup. My name is Shahan J. Raja, and I'm the college football insider at Dave Campbell's Texas Football, and today we are talking about the UTSA Roadrunners. And always with us, we've got Greg Powers from over at Next Level Athlete. Greg, how are you doing, man? Great, man. Thanks for having me, as always. Appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, of course. Well, UTSA put together an impressive class uh, in a limited amount of time under f- first-year head coach Jeff Trailer, finishing with the number 105 national recruiting class per 247 Sports and number 13 in Conference USA. Greg, when you look at this class, especially with the context of knowing that Jeff Trailer only had a couple months to put it together, what are some of your early thoughts about this class? Well, I really like the job that they were able to do reevaluating the players who were on that commitment list and then adding a few key additions down the recruiting home stretch. I think that we saw that Jeff Trailer and his staff, they are going to do their due diligence when it comes to evaluation work and that they're going to try to make sure that they recruit the San Antonio area especially hard, uh, keeping local talent at home if and when at all possible. And, you know, he's known for his ability to recruit East Texas. Right. I mean, he's one of the most historic coaches to ever walk the sidelines in Texas high school football in East Texas, has a stadium named after him in Gilmer uh, and did great work at Texas SMU in Arkansas before landing the head job at UTSA. Uh, So we've all seen his recruiting chops when it relates to the state of Texas. And I think uh, now that he's the head man, that he's going to make sure that that mission statement is passed along to all of his assistant coaches. And look, their recruiting class is full of Texans. Yeah, yeah, no question. Well, the first guy that I want to talk about is the top guy on the list. Uh, The number 75 player in the Dave Campbell's Sex Football Recruiting Rankings, Alan Horace, the tight end from Crockett. Now, obviously, Jeff Trailer tabbed a tight ends coach to be his offensive coordinator. That's a big part of it, I'm (laughs) sure. Uh, But when you look at Alan Horace, a guy who had offers from a lot of big-time places, uh, first of all, Why do you think he ended up at UTSA? And two, uh, what do you kind of see from him as a prospect? Well, you might have answered that question with your statement. You know, they're going to put an emphasis on the tight end within this offense. They've they've made that clearly apparent to Horace. And it didn't take long for them to establish a relationship with him because he was committed to Jeff Trailer while he was at Arkansas. So everything was lined up, I think, so to speak, for this move to happen. Um, Horace is a huge addition. As I looked at tight ends across the state this year, which it was a pretty good tight end class, he may have the most relative NFL upside because of his athleticism. Uh, He's a guy who can really run. He can jump. He moves unlike many 255-pounders. He's listed at around 6'4", 6'5", in between that 250, 260-pound mark. But you would never suspect that when you watch him on the field. He's a tremendous basketball athlete as well. He's one of these guys who can, you know, easily dunk a basketball and comes up with trick dunks and likes to post them on his social media and all that kind of stuff. So he's really bringing a lot to the table. And if tight end didn't work out, he could be a really special defensive end prospect as well. As a matter of fact, I think there are some schools out there who may like him better at that position. Um, But it doesn't matter. Find a place to play him because this dude's athletic. He's big, he's strong, he's fast, and I think he'll be a needle mover in that UTSA program. Yeah, when you look at him and when you look at sort of the other talent that they have on that offense, I mean, how do you expect that they're going to use him? Well, I think they'll use him as a flex tight end, but he's one of these guys who can really do anything. He's big enough already to be a true inline guy. He's fast enough to play H-back and get out on the edge and get to the second level to secure blocks. So he can do a little bit of everything at the tight end position. I love watching him be a flex tight end because he's seriously in the seven on seven setting and even on his own varsity team, he's a receiver who's big. He's not a big guy who's playing receiver. And there's a huge difference in that because he can really run and jump. Um, and he has great hands, soft hands. He can go up and get the football really easily. Uh, he's just a lot of fun to watch. And if he gets his opportunities in the passing game, I think that he will be one of these guys who can pick up a lot of first downs, and he's definitely going to be a red zone weapon. Yeah. Well, he is the top-rated prospect in UTSA history per the 247 composite. Wow. But moving on, moving on uh, with this class, what else kind of stands out to you about this class? Like you mentioned, a lot of Texans, a lot of guys San Antonio area, but also a lot of guys just around the state. 
Well, I just kind of like what they, they've done up front. I mean, because I look at some of the top-rated guys on their list, and you're talking about a Cyrus Simon, a big defensive lineman from Atascacita High School, Walker Beatty, another defensive lineman from Liberty Hill, a small school, but he dominated on his senior tape, and I really like that about him. And then they were able to flip Jamal Lagone from Tyler Lee from North Texas. So I think that was another huge addition, of course, Jeff Trailer's brother coming in from Tyler Lee to coach, I think, played a big significant role in uh, Lagone's decision-making process. But he was one of North Texas's highest-rated recruits, so I think that that was big news on the recruiting trail for UTSA. Yeah. When you look at sort of that list of guys, and, and right now we have 16 guys who have obviously signed a letter of intent. Uh, first of all, what's the reason for a relatively small number? And two, are there some of the guys, especially near the bottom of that list, who you think could eventually be big-time contributors? Well, I think it's very smart and savvy whenever you're named a head coach at a program and it's your first recruiting class to make sure that you don't give away all your scholarships year one. I right. think it's better to give yourself more evaluation time, and especially with the new recruiting period. You know, a lot of the top targets in the state of Texas were pretty much well signed by the time they really got the ball rolling uh, at UTSA under trailer. So that's something that you have to take under consideration for any new coaches who are hired at or around that first early signing period in December. Some of those guys or a lot of those guys that you may want your program have already made their decisions known or know where they're going to go to college. And you don't want to waste a scholarship in today's college football landscape on a player who can't fit into your program or may not fit uh, your scheme or doesn't have the talent to match up to some of the other guys who you may recruit in the future. A school like UTSA needs depth, and I think it's a smart decision to probably save as many scholarships for the 2021 class and then cast a wider net for that cycle. A guy to keep an eye on who's a sleeper, Donye Taylor from Shiner. Uh, he's one of the – actually, if you look at that 247 sports composite, he's the last-rated guy on there. Uh, but he's a tremendous small school player, an athlete, very speedy, and I don't think too many people know that much about him. I think that he could be one of those guys that comes out of the woodwork and people know his name a few years from now. Yeah. Well, one guy who I think a lot of us around the office were surprised didn't get kind of that bigger time attention was Kadrick Cobb, right. the running back from Denton. Uh, why do you think that was and how do you think that UTSA is going to be able to take advantage of getting him? Well, I think he's a guy who ultimately picked up around 20 offers you know so he did get a lot of attention a lot of that was coming from ivy leagues what we couldn't figure out is why he wasn't getting more major school attention and why some of these bigger programs weren't coming after him uh, because of the statistics and the numbers that he put up within that team he's very smart uh good student I think you know we talked about the Ivy League offer so he has an Ivy League pedigree when it comes to academics uh, and he's a hard worker he's just that type of kid who uh, you can't help but root for and what I love about what Jeff Trailer and UTSA do is that they do their homework on these evaluations and they don't really get caught up in the the pageantry or the the beauty pageant so to speak of maybe this guy doesn't have this offer so why should we offer him they looked and said can this guy fit in our program and make us better and the decision that they had on that was yes uh, so they they pulled him into the program and I think it was a good addition I think that Kadrick Cobbs is one of those type of kids who will continue to put up numbers when he gets into college um, the competition certainly going to be tougher no matter where he signed um, there's a chance that he could be, get beat out on a college depth chart that's just the way it is and if you don't have uh, the type of players on your team who could compete with one another uh, then you probably aren't going to compete very well on Saturdays anyway uh, but I'm going to put my money that he is successful that's just me and from what I've seen of him playing at Denton Geyer yeah well both looking now and also looking to the future so Jeff Trailer was obviously hired because he was a former Texas high school football coach because he's a guy who hired a staff full of guys who have ties in Texas high school football hired his brother who was a Texas high school football coach one of the you know the most legendary coaches to ever walk the sideline like you mentioned how has that impacted their recruiting uh, and how do you think it will impact their recruiting heading into the 2021 class well First off, I think every high school coach has an open-door policy when it's going to come to UTSA, Jeff Trailer and his staff. There's no doubt about that. We saw that instantly when he was hired at Texas. You know, four, however many years ago that was now, it sneaks up on me, I guess. It was it's, maybe yeah, five, or six, five, five or six years ago now. Uh, but the results of that were instantaneous. As a matter of fact, he was year one, the scout.com recruiter of the year in the Big 12 following his first full season of recruiting at the University of Texas and the reason that he was picked for that award was because of the impact that he made 
statewide. You know, there may have been a different coach who was in charge of a certain recruit at a certain school, but he was a door opener for Charlie Strong and the staff that he had there at that time with the Texas high school football coaches. So I think that you'll continue to see that trend. And one thing that Jeff Trailer has said since, the, since he was hired at UTSA is that they plan to evaluate any kid who a Texas high school football coach puts in front of them whether they offer him a scholarship or they don't offer him a scholarship, that they're going to do their homework and do the evaluation work to make sure that they're not missing on any Texas high school football talent. And there's not too many programs who have ever said something like that. And, you know, one of the first moves he made was go to meet with the THSCA and in front of the THSCA right as soon as he got hired uh, as the UTSA head coach. And trust me, everybody notices that. Now, as the head coach of UTSA – He's going to have to overcome bigger schools to change that program around. You know, we see some of the recruits who did have offers from bigger schools like Allen Horace in 2020, but can he consistently go up against SMU, North Texas, Kansas, Kansas State, um, and schools like that and get recruits to stay at home and play at UTSA? That's the question that he has to answer in San Antonio to me. Yeah. Yeah. How much, just one final question with that. Obviously, UTSA is kind of planning facility upgrades. How is that going to – first of all, how do you think that that helped attract Jeff Taylor to UTSA? And when sort of the facilities are up at sort of a top-end conference USA level, do you think that that will help him when it comes to selling the program? Well, I certainly think facilities play a huge role uh, in helping land recruits, especially when they're looking at schools, all things being equal. That can be a determining factor. But still, to me, when it comes to the recruiting process, the biggest things are – relationships, a clear path to getting onto the football field and making an impact for the team as early as possible, and future development, whether that means to get into the NFL or develop as a person after football. To me, those are the biggest things when it comes to recruiting. And if you can get a recruit to believe in those three things, then you have a good shot at at landing them. Awesome. That's Greg Powers from Next Level Athlete. I'm Sean J. Roger from Dave Campbell's Texas Football. Uh, We're going to be back with you guys again real soon to talk more UTSA football.